Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, my contributor, none other than A.B. Burns Tucker, law student and host of I Am Legally Hype. Should be an amazing breakdown. Top story of the day, an American city still does not have clean water to drink. Recently, they did not even have the opportunity to flush their toilets because they had no water pressure. The reason, well, still kind of unknown. We have some idea what created the mess, but no absolute confirmation based on an exhaustive investigation into the private company who was charged with overseeing the water issue in Jackson, Mississippi. Let's put up a picture of the governor of Mississippi full mass. So let me give you some background to what's happening now. Water pressure has now been restored, whoop de doo They can now turn on their faucet and it will spew out water that can kill them. That's what's happening. At least they can flush their toilets. Here's another dynamic, governor, that you have not addressed. Let me say this directly to Governor Tate Reeves. Governor Reeves, the public school system in Jackson, they have AC units. Those AC units are powered by water. The schools have had to turn off their AC units because they are just now allowing students back in after the water pressure was restored. But they have had to turn off the air conditioned units and come up with alternative ways to keep children cool. Because if they don't, the children will be forced to breathe in, yep, toxic polluted air. Okay, Jackson, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves and city government officials said today, the tanks are full, water pressure is solid. Reeves said during a Monday news conference, the governor said while there may be more bad days in the future, we have however reached a place where people in Jackson can trust that water will come out of the faucet. People in Jackson can trust the toilets can be flushed. The school system said on Twitter, water pressure was suitable for classes to resume at nearly all school sites. But once again, they cannot keep the children cool on hot days. There's more, while pressure has been restored, the water cannot be consumed. Jackson residents are still under a boil water advisory, the city said. In order to lift the advisory, city officials must get two rounds of clear samples from the water, a process the city hopes to begin midweek. Jackson home of about 150 plus thousand residents had been under a boil water advisory since July 30th due to a high level of manganese combined with the use of lime at the OB Curtis plant. That's the private company, that's in nearby Ridgeland. The main pumps at the water treatment plant were severely damaged around late July, forcing the facility to operate on smaller backup pumps. The governor did not elaborate on the damage, nor has the company. We still don't know all of the variables involved in this disaster. There's more, FEMA concerns with drinking water and the restoration. The head of the federal emergency agency known as FEMA said Sunday, it is still too soon to say when all Jackson residents will have safe running drinking water. The focus right now is making sure we can get bottled water out, FEMA administrator Chris Well told CNN's Dana Bash. The city warned additional challenges as repairs are made may impact the improved water pressure. The FEMA director visited the site Friday and said, it's not certain when the water plant will be fully operational again. Let's show a picture of the mayor, okay? Now remember I told you when I first reported on this story that the mayor Lumumba, he's a progressive, he leads in front. He's willing to say what is necessary to be said. He said the governor not only chose to not invite him to the press conference about Jackson, Mississippi. The governor has never talked to him about the crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. So the mayor said to ABC News, and I quote, 
as I have always warned, even when the pressure is restored, even when we're not under a boiled water notice. It's not a matter of if these systems will fail, but when these systems will fail. There are many points of failure. We're talking about a set of accumulated challenges that have taken place over the better part of 30 years. He's absolutely correct. I did the research here. Here's what else I found. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, when the Republican controlled legislature of Mississippi, the Republican governors of Mississippi would actually give grants to Jackson, Mississippi, because of their need and the importance, the importance of that population to the state. They stopped, they stopped those grants. They stopped the flow of resources, they stopped the influx of money. Now the governor, he wants you to believe he just found out about this maybe two weeks ago. As a matter of fact, in this press conference, he talks big and bold about, I was just briefed by my staff and here's what we're going to do. Well, damn it, governor, I have a clip of you, sir, talking about this in 2021. Which means, just as the mayor has indicated, this was something you were well aware of. So let's not play reactionary leadership here. You could have been a proactive leader and done the right thing by the community of Jackson, but Jackson is not your voting base, is it governor? 85 to 90% African American, vast majority of individuals there vote Democrat, you get the picture. It was not your priority, but you saw it coming. You talked about it in 2021. So here's what we're doing. Uh, Today during my morning radio show, I did a live remote outside of a church in Atlanta, Georgia called West Hunter Baptist Church. Here's some of the pictures from that. We are raising thousands thousands of water bottles to send to Jackson, Mississippi. Last Sunday, I worked with colleges, the AU Center, Spelman, Morris Brown, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta University to send water to Jackson, Mississippi. For everyone who's watching this news segment, I encourage you to find an opportunity to send water to Jackson, Mississippi. Now, should this be happening? Of course not. Can we talk about the policy breakdowns? Can we wax poetic about what happened here? Of course we can. But our brothers and sisters, fellow American citizens are struggling right now to just drink water. Jackson, Mississippi, when your house is on fire, nobody needs an arson investigator. You need a person with a fire hose and we need your help. So I encourage you to connect to the people of Jackson and do what you can. All right, AB, thoughts here. Yeah, so first I want to thank you, Dr. Ritchie, for using your your platform and your resources to help our American fellow citizens um, to help them get water. With that, I want to address the governor first. His actions are not only negligent, um, unprofessional, and derelict of his duties, but they are dangerous for this population of people. Let's remember that we have children. Right, There are elderly people, there are the disabled that are being affected by this issue right now. And this is a 30 year issue, right? So these are things that leadership has known about for years and years and years and have chosen not to deal with. Let this be a reminder of how dangerous gerrymandering is and how important voter rights and voting is. Because you need to vote for leaders who are going to support you and do the right thing regardless of what their political ideology is. When you step into that leadership role as governor specifically, you are responsible for the people of your state. We are in America. Where we claim to be the best, best on earth, right? And yet you have a a section of people, mostly black citizens, who are without running water to even flush their toilets. At a time when we have COVID still going on, we have monkeypox still happening, and Lord knows what else will will come up in the next couple days, months, whatever. So I, my prayers go out to um, Jackson, Mississippi, and I hope that we can come together to support this community and let them know that as American citizens, we got you. Very well said, we're going to keep everyone updated on the progress of Jackson, Mississippi and give you the truth as it comes. Okay, Donald Trump. Donald Trump in his last day or days of being president ordered a nuclear reactor on the moon. And the documents seized from his Mar-a-Lago property 
they in fact be connected. So let me give you the background to this insanity. In the final months of his presidency, Donald Trump ordered nuclear energy to be tested on the moon by 2027. As well as the development of nuclear powered spacecraft that would orbit the earth, the moon and outer space. He also ordered the development of micro nuclear reactors small enough that they could fit inside a typical shipping truck that zips cargo along the highway. So during this period, now I know you didn't hear about this, but during this period, the media was actually covering what? If you remember, January 6th protests, riots, terrorist attacks. That's what we were covering. Uh, the insurrection and the false accusations of voter fraud. We were covering all of that and a few paid attention. However, these orders may offer clues about what was included in some of the top secret folders that were in Mar-a-Lago. On December 16th, 2020, Trump signed the Space Policy Directive 6 which set the goal of testing nuclear energy on the moon by 2027. Now let's go to the document seized from Trump. Remember in the initial leak of what was found in that classified box or those classified boxes, they said, well, there are references to nuclear weapons or nuclear power. A document describing a foreign a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities, <laughs> was found by FBI agents who searched former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence and private club last month, according to people close to the matter. Underscoring concerns among US intelligence officials about classified materials stashed in the Florida property. There's more. Some of the seized documents, ladies and gentlemen, detail top secret, top secret US operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. Only the president, some members of his cabinet or a near cabinet level official could authorize other government officials to know details of these special access programs. According to people familiar with the search who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive details of an ongoing investigation. So what do we have here so far? This is not simply classified. This is not simply top secret. This is covert. This is read in only need to know basis. Members of the National Security Agency, high ranking executives are not exposed to this kind of information unless they have a need to know. That is above top secret classification. There are multiple levels above top secret and this is one of them. There's more documents about such highly classified operations require special clearances <clears throat> on a need to know basis. Not just top secret clearance. Some special access programs can have as few as a couple of dozen government personnel authorized to know of an operation's existence. Records that deal with search, such programs are kept under lock and key, almost always in a secure compartmented information facility with a designated control officer to keep careful tabs on their location. Um, this continues to get even more dire by the moment, okay? What is it that he stole? I don't know. Nobody knows exactly what he stole, but damn, obviously is extremely secretive, but once again, if Trump declassified the information, that means it would be declassified for all of us. We could have access to it, but we do not because it's not declassified. Did Trump steal classified documents? Yes. Is it illegal? Yes. Did he violate the Espionage Act? Yes. There was a reason that law was written. And there's a reason why he's being investigated under the prowess of that statute. AB thoughts here. Yeah, honestly, I think regardless of what your support for Trump is, 
understand that his actions are irresponsible um, and careless and dangerous to the American people, right? Um, and I think that what they have found, the documents they have found, juxtaposes his argument that, oh, I didn't know that those documents were in there and I don't know what got packed. I just, it went to Mar-a-Lago. No, you knew because if you didn't know, then you wouldn't be able to tell us that you declassified the stuff that they had, that you they found in your home, right? In addition to if this stuff is supposed to be under under lock and key, why wasn't it under lock and key when y'all moved from the White House back to Mar-a-Lago? So either way, it goes to show that there is there's a gap somewhere in the story, and there's more to the story than we are putting out here and what yeah. um, Trump is trying to tell us. But people want to drink the sauce, right? And then want to just roll with the punches. But this is dangerous because when other foreign nations realize how irresponsible the past president was with their information, that can put American people in jeopardy even further. So hopefully we get to the bottom of this, and, and you know our Department of Justice does the right thing. But never in my history of life have I known people to get away with stealing and not going to jail. Yeah, I spoke to a friend of mine about this very matter who actually has top secret clearance. And he said for Trump to be able to grab the actual documentation and leave the White House, that means Trump was working with somebody who's still on the inside. All right, there's a new development coming, I assure you. Okay. San Jose police, San Jose police, they decide to basically threaten to shoot somebody for recording. That's legally okay. You can record. Here's the video. Hey, What's hey. up? Don't tell me, hey man, this hey, is a public man. park. Hey, no, 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 Michael. Hey, hey, no, get in the f wrong. <laughs> I got my daughter here. Roll over. I got my Roll daughter here. Show this shit. I got my daughter here. No, look, you guys are like, what the f? I'm coming from the f. I'm coming from the f. What are you for? Hey, dude, you don't roll up on the hotel. I don't. I got white. As a matter of fact, I do have white. You can't be in the park after dark. Hey, what's your problem, dude? Sit up. I want to come on. Sit up. Dude, stop playing around. Come here. I have more video. Now, the irony so far is that Michael, the person who is being detained, is being detained for resisting arrest. How can you resist arrest when you're not even under arrest? There's more. Maybe you should back on his daughter's Pretty simple, right? Hey. He didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't do nothing. Uh, you roll up on people like that. Well, he was at. Continue, you guys? No. Nah. Well, he, he was with his daughter at the point. Uh, I thought you were going to put guns out here to play like that. He was with his daughter at the park. He didn't do anything wrong. Oh, well, he's in the park after dark, which is illegal, right? Okay. You guys are drinking in the park. No, after dark, no. right? Stop playing around. Come here. We're right here to f Stop playing around. Oh, I'm okay. Hey, you want to get dumped right now? Stop playing around. These are San Jose cops. They are sworn officers. They took an oath to protect and serve, to uphold the law, to uphold the Constitution to interact with the community in a way that's noble. It is not illegal to record in public. I wonder what these cops were trying to hide. What were they talking about? What made them react in such a violent, aggressive and criminal manner? Michael's friend um, who uploaded this video says that they are looking for legal representation. Let's put up a picture of the park. Um, so we have been able to confirm that the park was Roosevelt Park, community center and park. The friend mentions the park keeps its lights on after sunset for night games. According to the city of San Jose's website, generally all city parks close one hour after sunset and open at sunrise. If this happened a few nights ago, say around Labor Day, the sun set roughly around 7.30 or 8 p.m. in San Jose. Let's provide a picture, the clearest picture we could get of one of the cops who assaulted Michael. We have not been able to independently identify who this cop is. Maybe someone knows, but that is a clear shot of the cop, a clear visual of who he is. But we do know this guy, the chief, 
Until we know who this officer is, the chief will have name and picture associated with this story. San Jose Police Chief Anthony Mata. Buck stops with him. Let's talk about police in America, okay? I don't know who told you this, but you are not above the law. You are not above people. You are not above the office you serve in. We have to work together. We're supposed to be hand in glove. But community and cop, there's a separation. There's this real distrust. And let's be very clear where it started. It did not start with the community. Remember, go back 40 years ago, 92%, 92% of the general population in America trusted the police. During that same year, 84% of black Americans trusted the police. That number has damn near flipped. of Americans believe that some level of police reform must take place. That's Republicans, Democrats, independents, non-political people. Everyone is in agreement that you all are a problem, except for you, except for the police. Now, who do you work for? You work for us. Who pays your salary? Our hard earned revenue does. Who are you accountable to? Us. Now, at some point, you're going to be reminded of that because the wheels are turning. Now, you have an opportunity to correct the industry, to do the right thing, to excommunicate bad cops from among your ranks. But if you choose not to, expect there to be a judgment that is harsh, that is policy heavy and harsh. And many of your colleagues will be arrested. For you all who do not intervene when necessary, you will be charged as well. We have covered those stories already on Indisputable. It is starting. Prosecutors are getting hip to your game. And the tide of politics is changing. People are demanding more from their trusted public servants. AB, thoughts here? Yeah, Dr. Ritchie, you hit the nail on the head when you said, what were you guys trying to hide? Why did you have to be so aggressive with this citizen that you should be trying to protect? You immediately treated him as a suspect or a criminal as opposed to trying to protect him. What if he had an issue that he needed your help with, right? Y'all didn't even try to investigate and see what was going on. So that's issue number one. Number two is maybe we should start doing some con law training in our police training, Mm -hmm. right? We always talk about their use of force and how they're trained in that. Let's train them in the con Constitution and let them know what our American constitutional rights are. You have the right to record. That is under your First Amendment right. You are in a public space. You are holding the police accountable. In addition to that, in order to be arrested, you can be detained, but to be arrested and charged, you need to commit a crime. There was no crime that was committed, right? You created a crime as you attempted to arrest him for God knows what. Right, so we really, again, we really need to start looking at police practices, how we are training police officers, who we are um, allowing to become police officers. Because as extraneous as they make us seem that their um, background checks and things like that are, there are a lot of bad apples slipping through the cracks. And I'm tired of the excuse of, oh, it's just a few bad cops. It's starting to look like more bad cops than good cops, and that's the problem. Yeah, and if the culture was more good cops than bad cops, then the bad cops would be in the minority and they would be afraid. They would be fearful of acting in such a manner. But the silence is deafening. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. What's happening? Welcome back, we got a lot of show left. Let me remind everyone the watch list. Add the watch list to your watch list to Big Homie Jared Jackson. Live weekdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Watch live daily and subscribe at youtube.com forward slash watch list TYT. Also, shop TYT, okay? We got member appreciation week. It's happening soon. Members get access to new merch, fun perks, and incredible discounts at shoptyt.com. Become a member today at tyt.com forward slash join. That gets you in. All right, and you can get access to the sale. Let's read some of these amazing comments. Um, Nadius Maximus, Dr. Richie, thank you for your continued efforts to not just cover the news, but to become a part of it by helping our brothers and sisters who are in need. Once again, you inspire me. Well, Nadius, you inspire me, all right, and thank you. Iron sharp as iron, that's how this works. 
All right, travel nurse dragon. Once again, the cops defunded the cops. This will cost the city, damn right it will. And guess what? Republicans are going to be just okay with that. They will be fine because they're okay as long as the cops are defunded the cops and defunded the city and defunded taxpayers. All right, YouTube, um, Kenrick Jenkins. Hello, doc, love the show. Can I get a birthday shout out for my mother today? Carla Jones, proud mama's boy, Miss Carla. You raised a hell of a son here. Know why I know that? Because he watches Indisputable. Job well done. Happy birthday. Okay. Thank you, Chris Bethel. Uh, thank you, 32 Antoine. I I don't live in Mississippi, says 32 Antoine. Uh, but I want to send $100 for water to our fellow citizens, but I can only donate electronically. How do I go about doing this? So I'm going to recommend the disaster relief fund. I may have some additional opportunities that I will personally recommend tomorrow. Uh, but look up disaster relief fund. It should give you a good opportunity, a good gateway to connect in with the people in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Christopher Grant says, I live in Mississippi and things are horrible at the moment here. Uh, my heart, prayers and resources and resources are with the people of Mississippi. Uh, and keep us updated on things that we may not know in the news, that's important, all right? Sometimes they try to spin the narrative. We wanna make sure we give you the raw uncut truth. Thank you, um, Tyam Young, welcome to Indisputable. Donald James X, member for four months, thank you so much. Uh, Donald says, no other network does more for change than Dr. Rich and TYT, community for average people, activate, boom. Well said, we appreciate that, thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. This is the lady that was harassing me outside, telling me to get out of this country. Oh, and this is not my country. This is my country. This is my country. This is my. This is my country. You yeah, like it? Or you're racist. You're racist. Yes, I am a racist. You are the racist. I'm a racist. You need to yes, get out. I am. You get. Yes, I am. You are racist, and yes, I have you recorded. And I'm white, and I'm proud yes. that I'm white, and, I'm and I don't too, wear baby. a diaper and over I'm my head. And I'm white too, baby. You see it? I'm white. Even if I'm black, I love it. Okay? I love being black. I love being black. I love black. That's what God created. Black. All colors. I thought your leg was hurt. Okay? It doesn't matter. It's none of your business what I do. No, you didn't. Okay? It's not. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm calling the cops for you. You're racist. If you're racist, you see all these colors? Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Look at all these tables with I wasn't smacking you. I wasn't smacking you. You came up to me. You came up to me. She's racist. You see all color people? No, you shut up. Don't talk to my mother like that. Okay? You're racist. I have you recorded. You are being recorded. I don't care. You're going to be recorded. What? She's racist. She followed me. Can you take it outside, please? You're she racist. Was no, no, she no. didn't. You were outside. I was over there and you came over there. You can ask your mother outside in the car. Please. Yes, she came up can to me and jumped down for me. just a moment? Let's go. Just for a moment, please. She harassed my mother in the she, car. She my mother was double car. parked. She, she told me, I don't like you dressed like that. You're not in this country. Get the hell out of this country. Okay? I apologize for that. Karen, get your racist ass up out of my store. See, it's simple. That's how management should have handled that. She did what now? What happened outside in the parking lot? Get your racist ass up out of my store. I almost classified this as an anti-Karen because I give an applause for how this young lady handled that Karenicity moment. Yes, sometimes you have to directly approach a Karen on their terms. What happened in this case? Uh, the Karen did admit that she's in fact white and that she's racist. She admitted it. The reality is that many individuals, let's put a picture up full mass. Many individuals, they carry around this level of racism every single day. It's not the encounter that's the most dangerous element about Karens in this world. It's the non-encounter. It's the racism that she may have engaged in as a supervisor for a company or a worker at a corporation or a school teacher in a classroom 
or a judge on the bench. That is what makes Karenicity the most dangerous. These opportunities allow us to expose the Karenicity so that those who come in contact with this particular Karen are well aware of what they are dealing with. AB thoughts here. Yeah, first of all, I'm not arguing with nobody who go in JC Penny and leave without a bag. Okay. <laughs> that don't make no sense. You walking around JC Penny and girl. Why he wasn't shopping? You was in there being damn aggravated. Thing. <laughs> okay, being aggravated. But these my favorite type of racist. You know why? Go ahead and admit you racist so we can blast you out and everybody who function with you or around you or try to hire you or whatever, they will be put on notice that you are racist and you are out of pocket. I'm glad this lady approached her and checked her. I'm glad that she recorded it. I'm glad that lady felt uncomfortable, right? And I am glad that that lady got put on blast. I don't care how old you are. You are a detriment to our society and to American culture. And if you don't like that in America, we have mixed races, mixed cultures, right? We have different people that live here and do their thing. Then why don't you go to another country where you feel more comfortable at? Because yeah, that's how we get down in America. That's right. All right, I got something for everybody. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Don't touch him. Come on. That's a that's a that's a teenager, right? Dude. So these people who live down around there. And there's a teenager. Listen, listen, a young idiot. I commend this teenager for keeping his cool. Um, we all know that uh, Pop should have caught them hands for what he did, but he did not. The young man decided to exercise restraint, to act in a way that was mature, to be the adult in front of the adult who just harassed him. Now, according to the narrative, this was a teenager. This is a teenager working hard at Walmart. There's a conflict. The male Karen engaged in physical combat, which means he should have been arrested. That's against the law. Uh, but it looks as if he was able to walk away. He did get scolded by a few other customers and other employees, but nothing more than that. You can't go around putting your hands on people, period. But this guy took it to another level by literally physically attacking a teenager because of an argument or disagreement, conflict happens, part of humanity. The friction of life happens to everybody. But doing this was well, going too damn far. That's why we highlight it. Why? To provide a mirror for reflection and possible correction. AB, thoughts on this? Yeah, I saw assault, I saw battery, I saw harassment, I saw child endangerment, right? Why are you not in handcuffs, sir? You are yeah. absolutely lucky that that child decided not to lay you out like you should have. And I don't condone violence, but what I do know is you could turn one cheek, but after the other cheek, it ain't no more Bible. And that man turned about three cheeks. Yeah. And yeah. that Karen yeah. got to walk off unscathed. Yeah. He was lucky that day, but I'm this this getting ridiculous. He need to yeah. be in handcuffs. And and for those who are keeping record, I turn no cheeks. <laughs> uh, I'm not that kind of Christian. If you run up, I will deal with you personally. Now let's put up the uh, first <laughs> screenshot here before it turned violent. Now see this, not violent, nothing criminal yet, just an argument. Second one, there it is. Yeah. That's called physical assault, it's against the law. All right, we got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, we still have a lot of show. <clears throat> Let me remind you about aspiration, taking climate change to the next level, all right? You can take action against climate change. I know it feels overwhelming sometimes, but every little step towards a more sustainable lifestyle counts. Here's what you can do, open up an account with aspiration.com. It's real simple, you have the choice and the chance to reduce and mitigate your carbon footprint, fight climate change and give forests and animals another chance. Go to aspiration.com forward slash TYT to sign up. 
We got a lot of comments I will read as many as I can kind of press for time. Uh, Naughty's Maximus again says Karen's Karen's everywhere and not a thought to think. Tall lady and thank you tall lady. Um, the pregnant lady in Dallas, Texas got her first HOV lane ticket dismissed for her fetus being a second passenger, but got ticketed again by the same cop. Good for that cop. Uh, Robert Lima, call him out and thank you, Robert. Um, Mahmoud Mihardi, thank you so much. YouTube member, Donald James X, member four months again, thank you so much for that. Um, and Hunger Games underscore 1989. Walmart employees don't get paid enough to handle this. Not at all. Not even close. Okay. What if I told you? What if I said to you, a black pregnant activist was given multiple years in prison for simply saying something that the police did not like? You would say, no way. Not possible. Yep. Got the proof right here. Let's put up a picture full of mass. Uh, this is Brittany Martin. Miss Brittany Martin earlier this year, who is a South Carolina mom and activist, was sentenced to four years in prison over comments she made to police during a 2020 Black Lives Matter protest. Martin currently served almost four months in prison since May. Meanwhile, she's due to give birth in November. So let's give you the background, advocates and Martin's legal team are currently fighting for her to be released or at least receive a lesser sentence. Citing the toll of prison on her pregnancy and the fact that she should not have been in prison in the first place. And I concur with the facts and their conclusion. She's in jail because she talked in America. That's what Sybil Rosada, Martin's trial attorney told the AP. She's a dark skinned black woman who is unapologetically black and radical. You know who else they called radical? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They called him a communist, liberal, radical. Is this starting to sound familiar? There's more. As of July, Ms. Martin has reportedly lost 12 pounds while incarcerated. Remember, she's pregnant. She's been taken to the hospital eight times due to complications with her pregnancy, twice transported via ambulance. Martin told the AP, her body just can't get comfortable with the baby while in prison, where she's also faced regular threats to her physical safety and wellness. You know, when conservatives tell you they give a damn about the unborn, they're lying. This is a woman who's pregnant. They trumped up charges. They used a loophole in the criminal justice system in order to severely sentence her to these years. And now I'm gonna give you the background to that. Miscarriage of justice 100%. Martin told the outlet she's been harassed by prison guards and physically attacked by other incarcerated people. Rosada, the attorney said she saw Martin with scratches on the face and a bloody eye during a recent visit. Martin's also repeatedly been put in solitary confinement and sent to detention over alleged disobedience to prison guards and once for not cutting her dreadlocks, which Rosada, the attorney points out stems from a racially biased grooming policy. So let's talk about the case. See, the case raises significant concern about how it was executed, okay? So her case raises serious concerns about the free speech rights. In America, Martin, whose brother-in-law was killed by police officers, who shot him 19 times over a carjacking in 2016 was filmed at the protest, which was sparked by the police killings of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd in Sumter, South Carolina, May 2020. The police officers Martin addressed in the video were in full body riot gear, armed and on the brink of unleashing tear gas on the crowd. Yet they determined that it was Martin who posed the real threat. She did not. She said things that they didn't like and they decided to arrest her. Now watch how the criminal justice system victimized her again. In contrast, the jury actually acquitted Ms. Martin. Let me say that again, a jury acquitted 
Ms. Martin of a charge of inciting a riot and only found her guilty of breaching the peace. I'm going somewhere with this. Breaching the peace is only punishable by no more than $500 as a fine and up to 30 days in jail. That's your maximum. The jury also never reached a verdict on whether Martin threatened the officer's lives. Yet because prosecutors said Martin had breached the peace in a, and I quote, high and aggravated manner. And the high and aggravated manner crimes carry up to 10 years in prison. Martin was sentenced to four years because of the way the prosecutor charged the case. The attorney told the AP that the judge did not permit her to explain to the jury how high and aggravated charges affect sentencing. So what do you have here? You have a jury that says, oh, you know what, she didn't do the rioting thing, she didn't incite a riot. No, no, we, we, we don't agree that she threatened the police. Did she disturb the peace? Yeah, we'll give you that one, disturb the peace. Okay, according to the jury, they assume $500 fine maximum, maximum of 30 days in jail. They were not told that because of the high and aggravated statute that applied due to the overzealous prosecutors that she could in fact get up to 10 years. That part was left out of the jury instruction. Why? Because they knew good and damn well, the jury would have never convicted her of a violation of breaching the peace if they knew this woman could go to jail, prison for 10 years of her life. Now, who do you think is pro-life? Do you still believe these individuals give a damn about your right to exercise a constitutionally protected dynamic or unborn life inside of a mother? No, they don't give a damn about that. That's a talking point for them. It's a political ploy, it's a way to grab power, utilize a methodology in order to sustain, retain and obtain power. All right, AB thoughts on this. Yeah, prisons are supposed to be reserved for the individuals who have violated our laws, right? Who we as citizens have decided, you know what? You're not following the values and rules of America. Not people who actively and proactively advocate for the same rights um, that the people who came over here and hijacked this country came over here to do for, right? Like, this is. This is terrible in the sense of me knowing how harsh prison conditions are, right? As a pregnant woman, when you are forced to be in a prison where you don't have adequate food, right? When um, the environment is unsafe, where you can't even sleep properly because you're on this thin mat and a wired bed for being an advocate for change, for being an advocate for justice. That is not what you deserve to be in prison for. And I do think the pro-life people who are so concerned about a mother aborting mission on a child should be concerned about this because stress in this capacity is one of the best ways to lose your child. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to follow this story. I know the attorney is working hard in order to get justice here. We stand with you, um, we stand with the activist, and we stand with the community. We will continue to bring updates as they come. A dentist who's a predator basically got away with it. Let's put his picture up for a mask, we're going to expose him here. You're looking at Michael Damgard, a former Harrisburg dentist who was identified by the victim. He was able to take a plea deal on Tuesday for a fraction of the time he actually faced and a fraction of the charges he faced avoiding a trial that was expected to start this week. According to the allegations, he raped a 15 year old child. Let's put up a picture of the victim, okay? She is facing her accuser. She was willing to testify against this monster. Her name is Janae Ike, now 18, had hoped to face the former Harrisburg dentist at trial 
who she identified as raping her in the woods behind her home. She was as young as 15 years of age. She said after the hearing, not only did I get raped, I got raped by the system as well. She did not get to testify at the trial. This young lady told Penline, the local affiliate, the sadness, anxiety, and anger she's felt since the alleged assaults pushed her to try to kill herself multiple times. Let me say this to this young lady. You are stronger than you know. Monsters like this will not and cannot define you. I am proud of your courage. You are leading people that you will never meet by being courageous enough to stand up and say something to the monster that attacked you. Let's put the monster back up, deal with him properly. So the court of law has shown its inability to properly deal with a scumbag like him. He has money, he has lawyers, he has resources, and he has reputation. But sir, today you're in the court of public opinion, and I know how to deal with you just right. Let me give you background on the assault. During an interview with Penn Live last week, the young Ms. Ike described her unstable childhood home and said, Dr. Damgard raped her four times after the pair met through Meet Me, a social networking platform. According to the young Aki, Dr. Damgard asked how old she was. And she said 15. He instructed her to move their conversation to Snapchat, where messages automatically disappear, and to delete her Meet Me profile. That's called premeditated malice here. That's called strategy, that's called manipulation, that's called coordination. There's more. After Ike's mother found out about the assault, she contacted the police as any mother should. Police got DNA from the young child that matched damn guard. That's it, case closed, right? DNA, grown ass man, 15 year old child, case closed, under the jail, never to be seen again. That's not what happened. After the final sexual assault she reported, but she had just turned 16, which changes the legal threshold of sexual consent in their state law. A defendant can argue that they believe the person was 18. Damgard said repeatedly Wednesday that he was not made aware that she was a minor until after the final sexual contact, despite her reports to police that she told him she was 15 from the start. His reply, she said, was that he wished she was younger. Let me give you background on this plea deal. He will avoid having to register as a sex offender. Instead, he pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor, simple assault, and that's it. Two felonies, endangering the welfare of a child and criminal use of communication facility, cell phone. In exchange, the DA dropped 18 other charges including rape and statutory sexual assault. So he does not get to register, does not have to register now as a sex offender. As part of the deal, Dr. Damgard, whose dental license has now been suspended, could be sentenced to three to 12 months in county jail each for the endangering charge and assault charge and probation for up to seven years. The criminal use of his cell phone is also expected to carry probation up to seven years for a total of 14 years of supervision under sex offender conditions. He also must undergo a psychosexual evaluation and follow the recommended treatment. At most, he faces up to two years in county prison minus one day. Let's put up the DA who signed off on this ridiculous pro rape culture plea deal. That is DA Michael Piakuch arranged for the plea deal. The victim's trauma field passed was one reason the DA said he reluctantly opted for the plea deal to protect her from further trauma on the stand. So he's blaming the victim. Understand what this POS is doing. He made a bad call. You have a powerful, connected, lawyered up 
monster. He makes a bad call and he blames the victim for making the bad call. You do realize he could have prosecuted this case without the victim. It's possible, you got the DNA. It has happened before, I've seen it. So he knows his investigative tools. He knows his prosecutorial directives. He understands what leverage he has against individuals inside of that courtroom. And damn it, blaming it on the victim is not one of them. Let's put his picture back up again. You see, it's people like this, it's people like him and the monsters they protect. That is why the vast majority of sexual assaults go unreported in the United States of America. As I said, I am not the court of law. I'm a different kind of court here. AB thoughts. Yes, so first of all, I think we should check into Mr. DA's little meet me profiles and Snapchats and things like that. Because how do you so easily give up on a case like this? One thing about, excuse me, victims of sexual assault is we have this misconception of like putting them through a trial is going to make the situation worse for them, right? And we don't we don't want to further harm them. What really harms them is them not getting justice, yeah. them not being believed and being supported the way they deserve to be. What really harms is them knowing that their predator, the person that they had the courage enough to tell on, is still out in these streets, not only able to be, excuse me, go against other children, right, to continue to be the predator that they are. But now you are in harm's way because you were not protected by the law. This is very disappointing. Um, I'm glad that he lost his, his dental license and he can't practice anymore and he'll have felonies on his records, but he deserves to be in jail. I'm not, and I'm, I'm very critical about how much time we give people in prison. But one crime that I absolutely, a thousand percent believe that you should do heavy um, time for is sexual assault. Because that type of psychological damage lasts with the victim for a very long time. They don't know who they can trust. They start to think that they are the problem, that they are the reason why they were assaulted, right? You never, you don't know if anyone's gonna protect you. There's a lot of damage that comes with this, not just her past past and her background. And to use her past and her background, the fact that she came from a broken home as an excuse not to prosecute is ignorant. And you don't deserve to be an attorney or a district attorney at best if that is how you choose to prosecute the law. That That's is right. not the standard. That should be even more reason why you protect this young child because she has never been protected in her life properly. Well said, we got more. Welcome back, we got a lot of show left. Always good to be with you. Thank you for continuing to opine. Okay, Jenny B says Republicans are pro-white, pro-born life, that's it. Yeah, Pre-born life, that's it, yeah, pre-born life. Make you see the silver haired dragon. Um, a pedophilic predator will often will offend again and again, this is nothing new. The DOJ website openly admits that most rapists and sexual predators usually get little to no prison time despite convictions. That's true. Exoteric dragon, I bet AB even spits fire snorting her sleep. She doesn't snore. <laughs> yeah, she does spit hot fire, absolutely agree. C. Michael Henson, thank you C. Michael. Uh, Martin was a threat to these cops only because she was an activist and spoke truth about the injustice system in this country that they are a part of. That's accurate. All right. A teenager was arrested at an LA sponsored event, uh, LAPD sponsored event that was supposed to be about bringing community together. Here's the first video. Yeah! 
Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, bro. We are filming it. What am I doing? That's ridiculous. It is not, it is not, it is not illegal to film the LAPD. It is not illegal whatsoever, not even close. So that was Officer Victor um, went to grab Robert's phone before eventually assaulting him. That's what you just saw. We got more video, here it is. I don't care what you're doing. Well, then walk over here and deal with him. Because these youngsters wasn't doing What am I being detained for? What am I being detained for? That's fine, do whatever you gotta do. What am I being detained for? Do one, step up, accept yours, dude. Are you gonna get tased? What am I being detained for? He's getting to us. Are you gonna get tased? This is your warning. What am I being okay? detained for? Come out here and slam them youngsters hey, down like that. Sir, sir, we, we're, doing, we're dealing with something. You're dealing with what? Hey, listen. Just calm down. Hey, 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 this was meant to enhance the LAPD's public relations profile. This was meant to instill trust. Wow, we got the newest perspective of the incident directly from Robert himself, the person who was a victim. Here it is. Tell, yeah, let him detain him, what he's detaining him for. What is he being detained for? What is he being detained for? You ain't searching me, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, I ain't no probation, I ain't no probation, hey, I ain't no probation, I ain't no probation, you can't touch me, you can't touch me, you're being detained, I say you're on probation, for what? I never say you're on probation, I say you're being detained, for what? I don't explain to you right now, why you being detained? You do, you do, you have to have a reason to detain me, you can't detain me without a reason. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? What am I being detained for? What am I being detained for? What am I being detained for? Once again, cops saying somebody is resisting arrest who's not even under arrest to a person who's not under arrest. The young man was accurate on the law. Um, there is a law that says if you're on probation or parole, cops could basically ask you at any point um, who you are, provide ID, etc. So the young man knew the law. Let's put up the picture of the scene that's so dramatic, especially in the context of this was supposed to be a community building event. The LAPD co-hosted the community moving night with Harbor City's City Council this weekend, intended to boost relations between residents and the police, but instead all were left with images of LAPD officers brutalizing, pointing tasers and handcuffing kids on community night. Did you see any kids commit a crime here? No, the first disheartening video first appeared on film the police's Twitter account showing Robert who was supposedly helping out at the event, a volunteer approaching a couple of officers with a camera while they were arresting two young men. One who was said to be Robert's best friend, nothing illegal about this. You can record the LAPD. Um, let's put up the other steal here of the officer. Um, we've been able to identify this individual as Victor Quezada. So Victor turns around trying to grab Robert's phone. Once again, this is when the act became illegal in my opinion. And the officer crossed the line into criminal territory. It's at this moment, the gathering crowd cries out in fear of the young man's safety as the situation now escalates. So far, the LAPD has killed 13 people this year. Um, and keep in mind, while a fatality did not happen this time, it could have. One of those teenagers could be dead right now, there's more. Uh, Film the police goes on to say, 
He heard from Robert's mother who makes plain her son is not a troublemaker. He has never been in trouble with the law before. The act of filming the police has been established by the US Supreme Court. Straightforward, as part of a person's what? First Amendment rights in the United States of America. It is not illegal to film the police according to the US Supreme Court. Nonetheless, Robert was apparently arrested with his bail set at $25,000. Requiring his mother to pay $2,500 out of pocket to the bail bondsman company. And guess what? When you do that, you don't get your money back. The bond company keeps it. Um, this video has garnered obviously significant attention online, including from um, Wendell, Wendell um, Pryor, uh, Pierce, who is best known uh, playing Detective Bunk Moreland on The Wire. Uh, this was a tweet from Mr. Pierce. Watch this thread. For the millions of police encounters, there are the thousands of violent escalations that sour the public trust. The paradox is this was an event to nurture community trust and outreach. The police unnecessarily escalated this situation. Well said, sir. Very well said. Okay, so you have a community that's trying to engage the police thoughtfully, trying to create unity between cop and community. What do the cops do? They don't give a damn about your community. They showed you who they are by the way they viciously attack young citizens. And one happened to be a volunteer who possibly wanted to be a cop himself. AB, thoughts here? There's so much to unpack here. First of all, we know that LAPD has a reputation. Um, I'm not gonna go too far into it because I don't want LAPD bothering me. Um, second of all, I just commend this young man because he was about one flip away from giving that police officer a stone cold stunner. So now we see why they choose to use violence because clearly they can't fight. Which is another yeah. reason why I say we need to go ahead and improve our police training, right? Because that little six weeks that they spent running around that track in Inglewood clearly wasn't enough. Because you don't know the law and you don't know the constitution, which you are entrusted to protect and serve our community. And all you're doing is you got protected by your homeboys and you almost got served with a whooping by that little boy. But with that being said, um, I'm glad that this video made it mainstream, right? And I hope that our citizens, especially here in Los Angeles, pay attention to what is happening in our police departments, right? Yep. Police yep. are getting dangerous. And I think this just goes back to my statement earlier. There must be more bad cops than good cops, or these bad cops wouldn't feel so emboldened to keep acting the way they are acting. Yeah, and let me make sure I clarify this quickly. Um, when she says more good cops than bad cops, if you are silent in the face of bad cops, you are a bad cop. See how that works? Okay, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. All right, welcome back. Police chief busted in a sting operation. Why? Because he was soliciting a prostitute with $180 and a pack of white claw. So let me go to give you the background. Put up uh, the picture full mass of his mug shot. Let's go to deal with this. Uh, so this is Jason DePrima. Jason is a high ranking veteran law enforcement officer in the state of Georgia was busted in Florida. After allegedly soliciting prostitute uh, prostitution from an undercover detective. He is the deputy chief of police for Cartersville Police Department in Georgia. Polk County deputies down in Florida arrested him for allegedly seeking to pay for sex. This chief paid 180 bucks and a pack of white claw for the encounter. He was allegedly in Orlando, Florida for what deputies described as an American Polygraph Association Seminar slash Workshop. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd told reporters that De Prima did not take a personal car on the trip. Instead, the deputy police chief allegedly brought an unmarked undercover vehicle, usually meant for the Cartersville Police Department's officer on the DEA task force. So once down in Florida, Chief De Prima allegedly started communicating with an undercover detective on Wednesday. He agreed to engage in sex acts with her, but backed off saying, I got spooked, authority said. He nonetheless 
got back in touch with her the following day, arriving at a certain location in that government vehicle, deputy said. Chief DePrima allegedly brought along $180, well above the asking price. The asking price was, was 120. He brought 180 of a half a half hour of full service sex. That's what he wanted to buy. Uh, he allegedly had some text messages, some written messages that included this. Are you available tonight? The chief asked, undercover prostitute. Um, I'd like to come see you. What is your rate? Well, damn, chief. Uh, this is a text message. If you're legit as you seem, we will have fun. If not, I'm riding around with a case of white claw. Feeling girly. All right. The deputy police chief allegedly told the undercover detective that he sought another woman online for prostitution on Wednesday. He allegedly said his second woman asked for a picture of a $200 cash app card. So she knew he had the money to pay her. But she used the information on the picture to take the money and run. <laughs> Damn, Chief, uh, you're supposed to be a detective, sir. All right. Now, all of these missteps here, sir, I, I question your policing ability. No wonder you all are solving less than 1% of crimes. Now, his career is in jeopardy with this particular charge. Uh, count one count of soliciting a prostitute, he admitted to sending the text. Uh, investigators received as part of the evidence, Judge said. He allegedly asserted he arrived at the site of his arrest in order to hang out and watch football. Cartersville Police Department announced in a statement dated Friday uh, that he has been placed on administrative leave, but he is still receiving a check from the taxpayers of Cartersville. Still getting money. All right. The man literally just tried to spend taxpayer money on a prostitute. Now, what grown people do, that's what grown people do. My issue here is that you the police, sir. You are the police. I do not expect you to just be corrupt in one area. If you're corrupt in one, you're corrupt in another. That's how I look at it. All right, thoughts here, AB. I'm just trying to figure out how this is a misdemeanor when you cross state lines and government yeah. paid for in a government pay for a vehicle to solicit sex from somebody. That's right. Like detective, you didn't detect this setup? <laughs> Just <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> like again, police train. I guess this episode is about police training. This should be go. more more and more a reason to believe in increasing our police training because there's absolutely no way. Have the day you deserve, sir. Enjoy jail. All right. <laughs> Okay, cop who killed a 14 year old child is now um, on paid leave and coaching, okay? Let's go ahead and do this. Let me give you an update on the initial story that happened back in December of 2021. Here's the video. Yo, Richie, yo, he's right here. You wanna roll up on him? He's right there, isn't that him? Let's go. Kill cop. Yo, Darcy Jones, what's up, man? Kill the 14 year old. Cheer on that. Cheer on that. He killed a 14 year old. He killed a 14 year old. Google her. He killed 14 year old Valentina Oriana Peralta and Daniel Elena Lopez. Two people he killed. And he's on paid vacation coaching this team. 14 year old girl, Valentina Oriana Peralta. She didn't get to go to high school because of the coach on the other team, on Valencia. She didn't get to go to high school because she was 14 and Officer William Dorsey Jones killed her. Officer Jones at the center of this, rightfully so in my opinion. Here's a reminder of why these community activists were there. Hey, slow down. 
down, slow down. Let me take point with the rifle. Hey, back up. Get out. Oh, no, no. He's, got, he's got a two. Get, get, get you got it? You got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's hitting Shine. it on the right hand side. Hey, she's bleeding. She's bleeding. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I got it. Shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Hey, yeah. Get out your stomach! Get out your stomach! Get your hand down! Get your hand down! If you heard that screaming in the background, those were the screams of a mother who just realized her 14 year old child had been shot dead. Did you see how anxious this cop was to move all the other police out the way in order to shoot somebody who did not have a gun? Was an attack taking place? Yes, an attack was taking place. That was happening. There were multiple ways to disarm an individual. Now. The issue here is that not only is the cop on paid administrative leave pending an investigation. The issue is that many individuals are taking the side of the cop. So let me provide a little background, put his picture up full mass. Okay, you're looking at Mr. William Dorsey Jones Jr. He was spotted. Just two days before Christmas in 2021, Officer Jones, Officer Jones opened fire with a military grade rifle in a Burlington store in North Hollywood, killing two people. 14 year old Valentina Peralta and 24 year old Daniel Elena Lopez. Wow, the LAPD and the California Department of Justice are still investigating this shooting and him. Let's put up the pictures. Let's put them up, okay? On the left, you have a 14 year old. And she's dead, okay? The family had recently moved to California from Chile. And at the time of the incident, Valentina had been trying on dresses for Christmas in the dressing room just behind the wall Lopez stood in front of. The bullet entered through the left side of this young child's chest and passed through her diaphragm, spleen, left lung, right lung. Her death was ruled a homicide by the coroner. Uh, the family, they have filed a lawsuit against the LAPD and the Burlington store factory. Um, <clears throat> tragedy, right? Gone crazy. No gun was really required. You have non lethal devices in front of you. And this was a violation of protocol. So the suspension was required. We're gonna to continue to give you updates to this story. AB thoughts here. Yeah, just really quickly, I would say part of the issue here with him being out and coaching and things like that is that we saw officer, was it Muhammad Moore? I know it's a different state, but he is put in prison and has stayed in prison because he shot under the impression of protecting his partner. But because of how he shot out the car, he endangered others. I think this officer did the same thing and should not be able to be out coaching Little League football right now. You need to be in the house and wait for the decision to come down on this. Yeah. Yeah, all right, always a pleasure having you on the program, dear sister, thank you, always. Thank you. Uh, just remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.
Welcome to Indisputable. I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today. But what do we do on this show? We tell the truth. You know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. And I got to let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. People still need health care, so I won't stop. People still need criminal justice systems reform throughout this country, so I won't stop. And you won't stop either.